views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready for a game changer. Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sarah will bring you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Now here's your host, Sarah Westall. Welcome to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall, and you're listening to Conscious Business Radio on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. Have you thought about how dangerous our country, not our country, how dangerous the world is? Is it really as dangerous as the media and everyone portrays it to be? I mean, there's always wars, and there's terrorism, and there's drug wars, and there's conflicts all over the place. But is it really dangerous everywhere as it really seems to be? Everybody locks their houses and everybody locks their cars and we're all scared to go outside. Is it really that dangerous? Well, GeoSure Global is trying to answer these questions. They're they're trying to figure it out for the entire world, every city, every neighborhood. And the amazing thing is they're getting data from everywhere, from WHO, UN, CDC, Interpol, human rights organizations, city and country crime statistics. They have proprietary data. They have all these algorithms and, and proprietary ways they look at this stuff. They're also setting up specialized social networking uh, sources so that they can get real-time events going on. They are going to figure out, and they already have for most any city in the world over a hundred thousand in population, and they are working on getting every single neighborhood and every sing, single city of significance in the world figured out. And they look at six different things as far as safety because I mean what really is safety right I mean there's all sorts of things but they look at it overall but they look at physical harm theft basic freedoms disease and medical and then women's safety because women are are different than men I mean you can go into a man can go into an area and they're perfectly safe and a woman a woman could and she's not so there are really different things and then also time of day You know, it it could be safe during the day, but not at night. Or it could be safe Monday through Friday, but not on the weekend. So they're looking at all that stuff. Plus, there could be significant events that happen. Suddenly, there's um, some kind of uh, uprising, and, and those events make that place not safe. So they are looking at all sorts of things when it comes to safety around the world. And and other things that they're looking at is is how it affects countries when there's incorrect assumptions. So let's say that, uh, you know, certain countries rely heavily on tourism. If you're not, if they're made out to be unsafe, like the Ebola people, it, it was only a small part of the whole continent of Africa. But people, because it happened in Africa, people were afraid to go to other parts of the entire continent because of Ebola. And so that really hurt tourism across the you know these other countries and so it's it's kind of it it just reminds us of how ignorant we can be over other cultures and other places in the world and so that's what they're looking at but um, imagine how amazing their service will be when they have and they already have most of this data put in there but when they have just this treasure trove of information synthesized, imagine what they can use it for. Of course, travelers can use it to see if there's, you know, to maintain safety and on a hourly basis, but the media can use it, the governments and businesses can use it. It's going to be an amazing source of, of information. And that's what we're in right now. We're in this big data information age, right? But we have so much data out there, nobody knows what to do with it. Well, some people do. Obviously, these guys do, and there are other people that do. But the, the, the 
the hard part and the question is you have all this information, but you need to put it together. You need to take all these sources, synthesize it, have data models and algorithms that use it so that you can get information out that we can use to better things. Unfortunately, though, uh, the bad guys, they always there's always bad guys. The bad guys will use it to do bad things, but having all this information can really be an amazing amazing thing. So I am bringing the CEO of GeoSure Global here today, Michael Becker, and he's going to share with us what they're doing with this huge, massive data trove that they have and how it can benefit everyone from their information that they're getting and, and travelers and governments and business. So now let's welcome Michael Becker to the program. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Sarah. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. You have an app that provides safety information for cities all over the world. What do you mean by safety? I mean, what sure. is that? You know, it's such a broad concept. Sure. Basically, what, what GSure is doing is quantifying risks to personal well-being, and we provide context uh, for categories across six what we call safety categories. That includes overall safety risk of theft, physical harm, disease, and medical, basic freedoms, which is essentially political, and then a separate uh, dedicated women's safety category. So essentially what we mean by safety is the potential threat of some form of harm uh, that could occur in different parts of the world. And what wor- what parts of the world do you track? Sure. So we rate or cover uh, a little over 4,000 cities and neighborhoods are in the world right now. So every city with a population of over 100,000 or a capital or a major port of entry, uh, with the exception of India, China, and Japan, where we've cut off the um, that population cut off is 200,000. And then further to that, we've started to partition to the neighborhood level. Uh, I think we've got about 40 to 45 cities right now. and, and soon, Oh, so like uh, 45 to, uh, cities, you have all the neighborhoods mapped out as well? That's right. And, so, and, which and, big ones do you have? Yeah. So, so we've got New York, Boston, Mumbai, Nairobi, um, Paris, uh, and and, uh, and and several others. So, like when you go to Paris, you there there are certain areas that you just want to stay away from at certain times of the day, and but yet it's safe and it's safe for people to travel there. It's just certain time of the day, maybe you stay away from certain areas, or you might stay away from away from them all the time. Or how does that work? We, it's, it, that's a really good question, and and what we're doing right now is working on a an AM PM um, component, uh, which will rate the safety of, <laughs> during the nighttime and during the day because it changes. But as an example, New York City, which is essentially a, a very very safe uh, city, uh, there wouldn't be much variance between the daytime and nighttime rating for you know any given. Uh, neighborhood or, well, because or, it's or so location. busy all the time, right? It's like a city that never sleeps kind of thing. That's right. That's right. But when you get into the secondary and sort of tertiary locations, as I call them, those are less familiar destinations around the world. You know, let's say uh, 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 a Lagos, Nigeria, may have a much larger um, variance between daytime and nighttime uh, safety. And and also location and granularity of uh, location makes a makes a big difference as far as we're concerned, you know, for, well, for travelers. Well, well, how about how about even weekends versus weekday? Because weekday you have more business workers walking around, and then weekend you might just have a whole nother crowd. Yep, yep, that's that's very true. Um, you know, there there are uh, there are a lot of ways to to kind of express granularity, and and eventually, you know, I mean, there may be a difference between between days of the week, as you as, as you suggest. Well, what information and data do you use to get this information? So we evaluate data from many, many well-known and recognized sources, including the WHO, the CDC, the UN, Interpol, city and country crime stats, and then you know hundreds of others that are they're well-known, perhaps less well-known. Most of these are structured data sources, and we'll soon be evaluating massive amounts of unstructured data. But all of this data. What do you mean by data, unstructured and structured? So structured data would be tabulated uh, data that, that 
that would be in, in by list form. And then unstructured data is typically the kind of data that you see uh, through throughout the internet and, and online. So okay. it, it could be Twitter, so you might, uh, you might Twitter search, hashtags. And, you and, search for different things that people are saying about that part of the world. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you're like your own NSA except with safety stuff going on. I mean, this is a massive system that you have you know, work, that you're working on. Well, that, that's that, that's a that's that's very flattering. It's really it, it basically what we're doing is aggregating all these sources of data, and then sending them through pretty sophisticated predictive uh, models to assess, you know, to quantify uh, safety ratings. And then we also use data such as crowdsourced information, which we call ground truths. And then we have other other. Um, uh, uh, components uh, that we that we incorporate as well. So, what we're trying to do is simply give people a, a, qua- a quick, rapid uh, assessment, if you will, of of relative safety uh, for very granular locations around the world. Well, you have stuff from Interpol and CIA and things like that, right? I mean, how do you get permission to get all that? Well, in, Interpol is is free data. We don't use CIA data that that I'm aware of anyway. My my uh, business partner um, Don Pardue may, may know of uh, sources in, in, uh, that I'm not aware of, but but it's it's essentially all data that's in the public domain. Uh, there's just copious amounts of data that's free. Uh, that's available to to anyone uh, who who wants to access it. We just happen to have the skill sets and and experience to to go to the right sources and harvest the right kind of data that's relevant to to what were our applications and our mission. Well, you get real time event information. What kinds of events are relevant? Sure. So what we have uh, that's, that's real time is a crowdsourcing uh, community capability that we use and may mention we call ground truce. And that's, that's essentially a community of users that are responsibly and accurately sharing their insights and experiences for the benefit of other users. So these, these are insights that are again funneled up into our statistical models and, and are reflected out in updated uh, scores. So the, this ground truth component is real time. Um, so like how about like the refugees coming in from out of Syria and stuff? I mean, is that an event? I mean, how does, how do you classify that kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, well, that, that's, that would be information that would probably be reflected more uh, through unstructured data and, and as well as updated structured data sources. Um, you are listening to Business Game Changers, and we need to take a short station break. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Welcome back to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall, and we're talking to Michael Becker. I want to give you a reminder that you can hear all of my shows at sarahwestall.com, and you will see all of my past episodes, and this episode of it will also be there. So if you want to share this with your friends or say, hey, I heard a really good show today, you can tell them to go to my website at sarahwestall.com. So now we're back with Michael Becker. So, but 
the end of the day, our tools are available for anyone, and we encourage use. We just encourage responsible, accurate, relevant uh, reports that reflect conditions on the ground, both favorable reports as well as less than favorable reports. What we're trying to do is to, to really sort of drill down to the, to the location uh, around the world and reflect safety conditions. So if a, if a destination or a location may be unexpectedly have the misperception that it's an unsafe place to go, well, uh, if, at scale, if you, have, uh, if you have a lot of input from locals who know the area, they may reflect something that's a lot different from, from let's say, Western perceptions of that location. Oh, interesting, because it depends on the perception. So it might seem scary to us, but if you're a local, it's really not that big of a deal. That's exactly right. And, exactly and right. educating people on those different paradigms. Well, I could see this being used not only for travelers, but also for law enforcement and different, all sorts of different reasons. The, the, the applications are, are, are becoming much broader, and, and essentially what we're trying to do is to, you know, technology has made the world a smaller place altogether. What we're trying to do is to use various technologies to, to you know, reflect these conditions uh, because, we, you know, we, we don't view the world as being inherently dangerous and unsafe altogether. In fact, we, we view it as the opposite, but, but a lot of perceptions uh, and popular opinion uh, are contrary to that. And so if, if you can, at the end of the day, um, if you can quantify and reflect conditions that really ac- accurately represent what's happening on the ground, that's very useful for a lot of different parties and a lot of different industries and creates value chains and, and uh, uh, creates user utility. Well, basically, once you you get all that data, then you can really start using it in so many other ways. Because you know, the internet has so much data. We have so much data everywhere, but it's it's taking that data and actually making use of it. That is a it's a lot of work, but there's just an enormous amounts of things that you can do with it. And this is a really great example of taking all this data, spending some serious time figuring out how to analyze it and providing a useful. You know, something useful to the public, right? Well, we 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 agree we agree with that wholeheartedly. And what we're trying to do is to create sort of a different standard for for travelers by uh, by not only rating cities, uh, but but also to share uh, the the insights of of locals uh, on the ground who who know the areas for the benefit of of all uh, the the entire community global travel community as well as as well as um citizens of those of those locations well do you get other type of information besides safety information uh the it, it's really it's really geared now towards uh towards sort of general safety conditions but but there are many paths that we're seeing uh to to share other types of of insights uh, and, and 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 information for um, you know for users, which could extend beyond beyond travelers. Right now, though, we're really focused on the on, on more safety conditions and rating on, on a very granular basis, um, destinations and, and locations. Well, right now they just do blanket things, right? I mean, it's it's. Uh, like uh, you go to um, certain government websites, and they have travel advisories for whole countries. Right. And right. how does and yours is at a city level? Because you know, like it'd be they having a travel advisory to the whole United States when there's a problem in New York. Well, California is fine. You know, I mean, it, it's it's just such a broad thing. So how how do you see this helping some of those situations? That's right, and, and, we, and we agree with that. And the travel advisors have uh, have a very negative impact of, of uh, creating perceptions that um, so people avoid traveling to to countries altogether. So what we try to do is to create a, a different uh, a, a different mousetrap, if you will, by creating objective, very data rich, aggregated analysis. Uh, we don't have a political agenda or organizational views, and we're trying to contextualize and quantify. Uh, by by rating. Uh, now we also provide narrative around that as well. But the but the idea is that that uh, individuals uh, have different uh, risk profiles. The time of day makes a difference. Location makes a difference. And and so it's it's we we view it as much different than than traditional um, uh, safety uh, travel safety 
services and 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 other um um, you know, blogs and, and safety information. Well, yeah, I just, it, uh, it reminds me, my husband's family's from Mexico and, and there was a, there was a bunch of storms. This was like 10 years ago, but there was a bunch of storms. I live up, up in uh, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, and there right. were some storms down in Mississippi and some other places and they were all worried and, and they called us to make sure we're okay. I'm like, well, that's like three states away. <laughs> It's not us. <laughs> right. It was it was kind of funny, and but that's that's they didn't know it was in the United States, and the way it's being portrayed in the media, it seems like it's they don't know. They want to make sure we're okay. Well, here's here's another example of that. Uh, last year, during the height of the Ebola crisis, uh, uh, tourism to East and South Africa was very negatively impacted uh, because and and the epicenter of Ebola was at West Africa, which was over 5,000 kilometers away. In other words, it was a continent away. It was as far as New York is from London. So to not go to South Africa on safari or East Africa uh, for business because you thought you you had a risk of Ebola is really a, a, a great misunderstanding. And those perceptions um, you, know, you multiply those by, by thousands of travelers, they can have a, a oh, enormous sure. negative impact on tourism economies. And, and for, for many lesser developed, uh, economies around the world, tourism plays a, is a, is hugely important. It's as much as 10 to 15 percent of, um, of total uh, GDP in, in, uh, smaller countries around the world. So we're trying to counter that perception by, um, by, by, uh, accessing insights and sharing that information uh, with the global travel ecosystem so people have a different view and, and, and can maybe make optimal decisions and better decisions and not avoid countries because of, uh, you know, because of things like that. Well, I could see it be used the other way, too. There are probably cities that are a little more dangerous than people realize, and so it, it kind of goes both ways. That's true. That's true as well. Um, you know, especially you know, if you, there there are many many cities and and towns around the world, just like New York City has bad air, as every city does. And having an understanding of those pockets or areas uh, which may be, uh, in fact, riskier, is helpful. And and it, it, if you're going to uh, a town where you've never been before, or even a City that you are familiar with, but neighborhoods change. That's the whole. That's the whole concept behind what we're doing. It's about super granularity, and it's about dynamic changing conditions. And, and we, we, we're really an information provider at the end of the day. We just happen to be using technologies, sure. and quantifying it, and and that information we think is uh, can be very helpful for for citizens, travelers, and, and several different industry verticals. Well, are are cities and communities really liking and re- being really receptive to this to what you're doing? You know, it's interesting that that you ask that, Sarah. Um, we we have primarily focused on in several verticals, including the global travel ecosystem, study abroad, insurance, financial services, and media to date. But we've recently had some interest from economic development offices. Um, yeah, I could see that. They see, they see our, our, system, our rating systems as sort of a unique way to quantify uh, city safety levels, which can actually attract businesses to their to their to their region. So there's there are we see smart city applications to improve the quality of life for residents and to to attract more businesses to community, uh, which can help um, you know employees as well as workers of of a variety of different organizations. Well, I think that it's kind of scary with all the terrorism that I don't know how much is really going on, but the way the media is portraying terrorism, there's a lot of places in the world people are just absolutely fearful to go. Like the whole Middle East, you wouldn't want to, no one wants to go to the Middle East. It seems very scary, but how dangerous is the Middle East? You know, there there are absolutely areas uh, in, in the Middle East uh, that, that are quite obvious and that, that should be avoided. Like the Gaza um, Strip? Well, I, you know, I, there, there are places, you know, in uh, Libya, uh, there, there are places in, in um, um, you know, certain areas across Afghanistan and Pakistan and um, that, that are... Yeah, Al-Qaeda has control of that area. You might not want to go there. 
That's that, that's right. Uh, you know, it's it, it, you know, unless <laughs> unless you're uh, a thrill seeker or uh, you know you're, you're accompanied with with a lot of um, heavy um, security personnel, there, there there are very definitely areas where you really want to avoid. We need to take a short station break, and we'll be back with business game changers on the Conscious Business Radio Network in a moment. ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. What if we really didn't have to die to go to heaven? Are you curious about the afterlife or rebirth? The highly anticipated new book from author Dr. Susan Allison, You Don't Have to Die to Go to Heaven, is available now. Find out how to find guidance and healing in the spirit realms. Order the book today and put it on your must-read list for 2016. Visit DrSusanAllison.com to learn more. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Shine on Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine on Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Has asthma or allergies got you singing the raspy blues? Allergy and Asthma Networks is the nation's premier nonprofit patient centered network of doctors, caregivers, patients, and healthcare professionals who are dedicated to ending death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions. Join President and CEO Tanya Winders each month on the Dr. Pat Show to learn more and visit allergyasthmanetwork.org today. Breathe better together with Allergy and Asthma Network. Welcome back to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall, and we're, we're talking to Michael Becker from GeoSure Global. Um, if, the drug, was, if the uh, drug cartel controls it, you might not want to step in that little area either. There are <laughs> very much so, yeah. There, there are a lot of tricky areas. I mean, if you think of it in a, in a different perspective, uh, there are vast areas of the world that are perfectly safe, perfectly stable, and perfectly tourist friendly but of course but how about even uh, in the middle east there are are there places that are just fine in the middle east but we just think that it, you know is that like an ebola situation where we think everything in the middle east is is dangerous for americans oh yeah of course there are definitely places in the middle east uh that are that are perfectly safe and secure to go and and you know i mean they're they're, they're you know they're um Parts of North Africa, uh, uh, Morocco, um, you know, there are beautiful parts of Egypt, although Egypt has, ha- has had their, their issues as well. But you don't avoid, um, you know, for example, going back to the Kenya uh, uh, example, you don't avoid Kenya altogether because of security events that have happened up near the Somali border. 
uh, you, you, there are beautiful areas of the Rift Valley and down near the Tanzanian border uh, that are perfectly safe and suitable. But certainly, there are parts of, of um, countries in you know, Yemen and, and, and Iraq and, and Syria that, uh, that are, would be off limits for, for, for anyone but specialized personnel. Well, how does this help terrorists if they, it's pretty helpful. I mean, you could be really strategic. You, if you had a lot of power, you could actually destroy a country by, by making it scary and getting people not to travel there and really hurting the terror, their uh, tourism market. Well, that, that's exactly right. There was an article in the New York Times earlier this year uh, that, that essentially said the same thing, that because the tourism industry has declined so sharply uh, for reasons including Ebola and, and localized uh, security events, that the, the tourism industry, which relies heavily on, on foreign visitation, uh, has dried up. And parts of Mombasa and on the, on the coast of, of Kenya that has contributed to um, unemployment and is a lure uh, for citizens to to go to the dark side, if you will. So, uh, so you're absolutely right. And what we're trying to what we're trying to do is to support tourism economies and and to again reflect actual conditions on the ground, which may be a lot different than 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 the public perception. If we can help a country to to provide employment and visitation uh, or tourism employment, uh, then we've done, we've done a good thing for the world, and that's really our, our goal and our mission, to, to help people understand that you just don't avoid countries altogether. You just remain aware of, of areas that, that shouldn't be visited, and certainly you, you go to parts of, of the, the country that are, that are beautiful and safe. And, and uh, employment in the tourism industry uh, for many of these countries is, is a is very, very important and a, and a big contributor to their GDP. Well, how does your gender affect it? Because a man can be very safe in an area, whereas a woman might not be. That's correct. That's correct. And we've actually got a personalization uh, tool that, that is uh, uh, that, that we feel is very innocuous and, and non-invasive, but uh, it, it and, and this isn't required. But you can you can use our our mobile apps and um, input your age, your your nationality, languages spoken, your travel experience, gender, so on and so forth, and all of those are contributors. So so in other words, uh, if you're a female, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, English or French-speaking um, European, let's say, and you're in uh, parts of Central Asia. Uh, you may have actually have a higher <laughs> a higher risk level. Uh, conversely, um, you know than, than a let's say an, an Arabic speaking um, male forty year old. So so it you know it, so the the personalization makes a, a difference. We've incorporated that because it's it's a way to make the, the our safety ratings uh, more precise for the for the user. Well, how about race? Would race be an issue to him uh, being a African American or being a white person in the wrong, you know, neighborhoods? Does that make a difference? It, it, it does, uh, but what we've tried to do is we 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 um, we've we very carefully selected the the personalization variables uh, so they they are innocuous <laughs> and. And by by incorporating some of those variables, we you know we can ascertain uh, race, but but to come right out and 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 uh, ask for race or religion is is um, you know we view that as as being more invasive. It's hard. You want to make sure that you're not you know creating racism. You want to just help people play, be safe. But I mean, if you go into Chinatown, for example, at certain areas and certain times, it might not always be safe. Um, or right? Am I wrong? Am I just? Do I have a stereotype that is not right? You know, well, Chinatown is is pretty close to home for me uh, because I'm from. New See, York. I might have a I might have a stereotype that's not right. And, and, and I and I think it's I think it, Chinatown is very very safe. But but the, but your point is is correct, Sarah. The the you know your your travel experience, your your the color of your skin and eyes and your language and travel um, and gender uh, familiar 
familiarity, gender, uh, does have an impact in certain parts of the world. It does make a difference. Uh, but again, you know, we've tried to, to very, to make it very, uh, sort of personalization friendly, uh, and just to, to point out, uh, you know, without, without being, uh, without bordering on any privacy issues or, uh, or to, or to make it uh, appear that, uh, uh, there's 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 profiling, so to speak, uh, but it does make you know, it's really obvious it makes a difference. Yeah, because it can be kind of scary in certain areas if you're the wrong type of person for that area, right? They just don't want outsiders. That's if right. you look like an outsider, if you're just not what they are, whatever they are, doesn't matter what group it is, it it can be bad at in certain that, places. That's right. That's right. So it's we're not. Just trying to, yeah. Just trying to make it as as uh, frictionless and effortless as possible, and and you know we again we're trying to democratize and to to help uh, with safety awareness um, without uh, creating any any kind of uh, potentially uh, appearance of uh, of a fraud. So. Well, how about um, some harder areas to get into, like North Korea? Do you have any of that, or is that just pretty much off limits because you just can't? Get the the data, and people don't go there that often. You know, there, there's. You're correct. It, that's a that's a different animal altogether. I, I would say the North Korea. Um, I'll, I'd have to check uh, what we've got it rated, but it's probably one of the safer areas to go. It to probably because is it, because it. You know, there, you're not going to experience as much theft uh, or or or. Um, uh, physical harm there, uh, because it's so closely guarded and so closely monitored. In fact, Western travelers, you know, once you go through the visa process, have, uh, 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 I guess you, you would call them ambassadors in a, in a friendly way, uh, to guide you around, uh, certain areas. Now, you can't go everywhere. You, you, your, your freedom is, is limited and, um, but it's probably one of the safer areas to go. Um, so, so it's, that's an interesting. Well, uh, you know, are there other countries yeah. that are kind of offbeat that you do have? Like, do you have, um, I don't know, Cuba, and do you have, uh, you know, all parts of Russia and things like that? Yeah, we, we've we, again, we've got about, um, we've got every city with a population of over a hundred thousand rated, with the exception of, of uh, as I mentioned, China, India. Which is at two hundred thousand. Cut it off at right at two hundred. So basically, that represents um, most cities of the world. Uh, we're, we're essentially, we're going to have every city in the world above um, a population of um, you know an, a, an appreciable level, and then every neighborhood. Uh, but it really represents um, um, uh, almost every. It, rep- it certainly represents every country, and in most countries, many many cities in that in those uh, those countries. So we've got representation globally. Interesting, and and it's not hard to get data from Russia or from Cuba or from some of these other places. The, the other, you know, there are certainly countries in the world where it's more difficult to get data. Absolutely. Um, and what, what we can do is, is use Western data and available data sources and then using uh, predictive analytics uh, gauge what those, uh, what conditions may be uh, in certain locations. Um, but for the most part, there is just, there is just massive amounts of data, whether it comes directly from a country or a city or a, uh, a certain area. Um, it could be Western data that's, that's freely and public, publicly available. Uh, you know, in certain, in some cases, uh, data that is, is created and produced by countries, uh, may be less accurate and, and, uh, almost irrelevant in, in many cases. So we, because it's we, just not accurate, so it's not even worth using? That's correct. That's absolutely correct. You know, you, you may not want to. It's just use... propaganda BS, and so why that's bother right. with it? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So one of our skill sets is just knowing wh- which data to use, how to get to it, how to access it, and then how to um, essentially manipulate that data or or analyze it uh, from a, st- a statistical respect to, get to to extract as much informational value as possible. We have to take a short station break. We'll be back in a moment.
Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hello, we are back with Business Game Changers on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and Conscious Business Radio, and we are continuing our interview now. Well, how much does it does it cost money to use your application, or is it something that you just? I mean, how how are you? What's your business model? Sure, and and and, and um, yeah. So right now, the the uh, our, our mobile app products are free. In iOS, in the App Store, and in Android and, and uh, Google Play. So we'll, we'll always have free mobile apps. Um, but our business model is, is um, several fold. We, we're developing um, new products. We'll have a web app product soon that's, that is monetizable. Uh, we'll have professional mobile versions uh, with dramatically enhanced features and, and functionalities. Those will be premium apps. Well, so you might like people who are planning events or people who are travel, you know, they do tourist type events and help people plan their itinerary and stuff. You, you could have professional programs for them. Yeah, we, we've got specific functionalities for, uh, for specific markets. And then, and then we've got some, um, uh, much more higher, high powered, uh, capabilities, uh, for, for all markets. So it's, uh, we're customizing, uh, features for certain markets. And as well, we'll have, uh, some really neat things, uh, to offer, um, uh, for, for anyone. And, and those will be premium apps, but we'll always keep a, a, uh, we'll always have free apps available. So the average uh, person. Market. Can for general safety thing, if you're you know going to Paris and you're stopping in London and you know doing some kind of tour around Europe, they can use your safety app and have a lot of good functionality. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a very quick way uh, to again to quantify uh, neighborhoods and cities, and, and we also provide. Um, some narrative to provide context around that that context, if you will, and and it's it's very specific regarding disease and medical and political and theft and so on and so forth. And then there's the ground truth side, the crowdsourcing component, uh, which at scale we're hoping that that people really see the benefit of sharing accurate insights, whether again whether unfavorable or or, or favorable events, uh, to reflect conditions on the ground. So, um, you know, we we, we want those insights to to benefit all users, and and those those ground truths are uh, again we we use those as part of our, our rating system uh, that they're, they're all uh, funnel up into our, our algorithms to to produce uh, accurate um, and precise uh, scores uh, for for neighborhoods and, and cities. Well, uh, what are some of the the most surprising things that you've seen now that you can analyze all this data and you have access to things that you never had access to, what are some of the surprising things and trends that you're seeing? <laughs> That's a really interesting. It's a, it's a great question. Uh, what, what's really amazing to me uh, is, is I, I, I'm not a um, techie by, by background. I come from a finance uh, background, but the just incredible Functionalities and capabilities uh, that can be that can be developed um, using all kinds of technologies, and and to us we see so many interesting ways to increase user uh, utility uh, to improve. User well, like utility. attaching it maybe to a GPS system and things. Right. Well, well, smartphones already have GPS in them, so that's well. The you, but I mean, having a way of having your your information tr- uh, attached to the GPS system, so wherever they go, the data can come up. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So there, there, there are many ways to to distribute and to deploy uh, our 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 information across you know 
different types of, of platforms and, and um, uh, whether it's in the global travel ecosystem, uh, whether it's in the media uh, industry, um, uh, study abroad, international education are, are very important verticals as well. And more and more uh, programs want, they, they're looking for better ways to assess and analyze uh, safety and, and also know where their students are to communicate with their students. So they're just so many interesting and, and quite honestly cool and exciting technologies that we can build into this. We, but at the end of the day, we've got a we're a startup. We've got to remain focused and make sure we're. Well, sure. We're you gotta forward. you gotta get your business going. Well, how about the, <laughs> how about the geopolitical right. situation? I mean, are you seeing like trends and events based on wars and issues going on in the bigger geopolitical landscape? Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in, in geopolitics, and and um, you know, the I, there are some some very alarming uh, things happening around the world. I mean, that that's probably the understatement of the day. Um, but at the same time, the we believe that the world is 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 not as as really as bad, generally speaking, as maybe popular uh, opinion may suggest. And it's really bad, but just in certain areas. It's really bad, except in certain areas is a very succinct way of putting it. And if you have granularity and you, and you know uh, that generally speaking, locations are okay, you just want to be aware of less safe uh, areas and and build that into your uh, into your planning and and uh, you know end route uh, you know during travel um, uh, preparation and and while you're on the road that's just, that's smart travel and that's awareness and that's empowering and what we're trying to do is to uh, help encourage travel and to create confidence uh, among travelers to go places where. Where they they have that inf- that understanding and information. Well, you guys will be eventually will be the most educated people on what's going on in the world. <laughs> NSA will come to you. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but you will be a pretty great information base. I don't know about that, but it, you know, basically, what we're trying to do is uh, it, right now we look a little more consumer and, and business traveler friendly, and we're just trying to create a different way of expressing what people really want to know is is um, how do you quantify it? How do you you know how do you you, you read a report? What's it really like? And and to um, uh, to, to aggregate all types of different sources, not just. Uh, organizational judgments and reflect that in 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 numbers and in in uh, by quantifying it. Sure, uh, those numbers are going to change, uh, obviously. And places and, and change, that's the whole idea. right? But this gives this also seems to give cities and communities an incentive as this becomes more. This will become more normal. People will be using apps like yours. It gives cities and communities an incentive to really clean up their act. Well, that's exactly the long-term vision, and you hit the nail on the head. It, by, by generating safety awareness and, and, and encouraging uh, information and knowledge and sharing insights, the whole idea is that cities, towns, countries, provinces, municipalities want to improve their safety ratings because that 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 attracts visitors. It, 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 it encourages businesses to move in. It actually uh, the, ultimately can attract foreign investment capital and investment flows. And, and that, that's really what we're trying to do is just to improve safety conditions and, and, and awareness through, through information and through technologies, uh, so, so the world can, uh, ultimately be a safer place and a safer environment. Exactly. Well, I thank you so much for sharing this with us today, and um, I, good luck on getting this going. I know it's a ton of work. I know you already have it going, but getting all the way down to the community level and neighborhood level, it's just a lot of work, and I commend you for that. Well, thank you so much for having me, Sarah. I, I very much appreciate it, and we're very, very excited about it. We're seeing just enormous opportunities and, and applications uh, well beyond what we ever had expected, so we're, 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 we're we're very excited. And well, thank you very much for having Well, good. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Take care. 
I'm going to end the show today with some information on terror attacks around the world. First of all, terrorism is considered the wrongful use of violence in order to intimidate civilians or politicians for ideological, religious, or political reasons with no regard for public safety. Basically, a bunch of bad guys hurting people who are innocent. And the facts are that terrorism has caused around 130 fatalities worldwide between 2006 and 2013. But putting that in perspective, 1.3 million people die a year in car crashes around the world. So that would be 100, 130,000 people for from 2006 all the way to 2013 compared to 1.3 million car crashes, people dying, fatalities in car crashes each year. So it's not as, well, it's bad. It's not as bad as as people want to make it out to be. Nonetheless, there are issues going on. And the terror attacks have actually gone down quite a bit. There was a lot more in the early 2000s when the United States was fighting Al Qaeda, and there was just a lot more war, you know, a lot more uh, conflicts and things going on in the early 2000s with Afghanistan and Iraq and so forth. But uh, I'm going to give you a really interesting stat, and this is the terrorist attacks in 2014. So this is just last year. They, well, now it's 2016, so but a little over a year ago. These are by country. Iraq has the most terror attacks with 3,370 last year. Pakistan had 1,821. Afghanistan had 1,591. India had 763 terror attacks, Nigeria had 662, and Syria had 232. So we're pretty lucky that we don't have that many terror attacks here. So um, we have a lot of death by car crashes and death by medical problems, but not by terrorism, which is really great. But here are some other interesting things. Number of worldwide kidnappings due to terrorism from 2007 to 2014. And I'm finding these on Statistica. It's a, the statistics portal that you can find online. But very interesting here. There, in 2007, there was 4,980 4, people kidnapped due to terrorism. In 20, 2008, it was about the same at 4680, but then it jumped really high in 2009 at 10,749. The interesting thing would be to see what is behind that huge increase. And then it dropped again, 6,051, uh, 2010, and then in 2011, 5,554, and then in 2012, it went pretty low, 2000. Uh, 1,283, and now it's climbing again. Um, 2013 is 3137, and then 2014 is 9428, almost back to double or even, tr well, it's almost eight times as much as 2012. One thing that I do see is, is, is the economy is pretty unstable in these times, so I'm wondering if a lot of it is due to economic problems. It would be really interesting. If anybody has any information on, on that, I will uh, post that on my website on why terrorism is going up so much in 2009 and 2014. I'd like to see what 2015 had as kidnappings. Uh, but very interesting. I, uh, I want to tell you that I have information on Michael Becker up on my website so that you can go to Geo Shur's, uh website and find information on his travel app and all the information on keeping safe when you're traveling around the world. It is free to use his software. Of course, if you are a media company or if you are a travel agency, he has more services and things that you can use and pay for it. But for the average person like me, you will not have to pay anything. So it's a great service for people to be able to use. And I want to remind you to go to my website at sarahwestall.com to get all my past shows. And if you have any good ideas on how the world is changing and how paradigms are changing and the big issues and some leads on some good stories, please let me know that. And, of course, I'm always interested in hearing what you have to say. And 
And if you are a company that wants to sponsor my show, I'd really appreciate that as well. We're going worldwide and nationwide. We're going to be in 120 countries, so you will have the ability to really get your message out there. So I want to just tell everybody, I hope you have a wonderful 2016, and it's prosperous and great for everybody. And I hope you stick to your New Year's resolutions, which is really hard to do. And from there, I hope you have a wonderful day. You've been listening to Business Game Changers with host Sarah Westall. Tune in each Monday at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, as Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in Mondays at 12 noon Pacific time and learn more about Sarah at sarahwestall.com today.